Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 274. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're going to give you our DVD rundown for the week of August 27th. Just blazing right yep. through this year as always. Yep. Uh, I would say kind of a mediocre to poor week. Yeah, you know, I mean, this, is, this is one of those weeks where the releases that are out are less important because of what they're bringing to the table less more than they're just home Well, it's also release. like the... They're bad releases, but they have a lot of special features, and then there are a few good releases, but With, they have no special yeah, features. Yeah, or so. awkward special yeah. features, so or weird boxes. It's kind of it's kind of a shame, <laughs> but you know, let's get this party yeah. started. Uh, first up, we're going to talk about The Great Gatsby. Yes. This is the Baz Luhrmann mm -hmm. reinterpretation the of F. the Scott Fitzgerald book. Classic, mm -hmm. uh, starring Leonardo DiCaprio, Tobey Maguire, Carey Mulligan, yes. and Joel Edgerton. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. This is, as with all Baz Luhrmann films, a sort of st hyper stylized yes. yes. reimagining of what the story would be like. Mm -hmm. um, most notably, the music being uh, very contemporized with yes. Jay Z and who else was it? Uh, Beyonce, a Andre, Andre 3000, a Florence and the Machine, Gautier. Lana Del Rey, Gautier. Yeah, exactly. So there's a lot of. Um, a lot of very modern mm -hmm. music set in the context of this and so. She got a little flack for its fact of completely, basically misappropriating the actual purpose of dressing like a flapper, mm -hmm. which was more to be boyish and kind of flat, and they kind of took the style and just ultra stylized sexy. it to be like sexy ladies but happening to wear these types of clothes yeah. and bobbed hair and so yeah so you know uh alan gave it a c plus okay middle middle Barely decor passing. yeah not exactly <laughs> great so he wasn't a huge fan of it i think he's a pretty big Oz Lerman fan in mm. general, so that probably speaks to that. Um, this was one of those films I was like, I know going in, I'm yep. not really going to get into this, even mm -hmm. though I like The Great Gatsby as a book, uh, you know. Yeah, but, I used to be a Baz Luhrmann fan, and then I saw Australia, and, that's and then, it was kind of mm, hard to keep following after that. But you know, it's got a fair amount of uh, various special features. I mean, you can get the, the combo pack with the Blu-ray 3D, the Blu-ray, the DVD, and the Ultraviolet together, so that's cool. Not too shabby. And there's a couple other variants, like just Blu-ray, DVD, Ultraviolet, etc. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, in terms of special features, there's the a feature about the sounds of Gatsby, which is about, you know, the use of Jay-Z, Beyonce, Fergie, Will I Am, etc., hmm. and how they are drawn upon to craft the film soundtrack, which is very heavily important to it if you watch like the trailer and stuff like that gotcha. you know how much that reinterpretation of the music was uh there's gatsby reveal which is uh delving into five key sequences in the film including gatsby's party daisy and gatsby meet the pool scene etc hmm. there's a discussion about the jazz age you know jazz wealth booze and extravagance in the 1920s yeah roaring which is 20s. pretty cool or booming uh, there's also one about the razzle dazzle the fashion of the 1920s so I'd be curious to hear what they have to say about the <laughs> costuming of it even though it seems to go against yeah. historical yeah truth and yeah. Um, there are a whole bunch of other ones but the last one I want to mention was there's 1926 trailer um, the Great Gatsby which is a vintage silent film trailer huh so yeah cause I think this is like the third or fourth I feel oh, I'm sure I know there's the it, one yeah. with Robert Redford yeah, there's a whole bunch there, yeah, of Yeah, there's been a... a so. uh, not surprising, because the book is what, like, World War One era? So probably yeah. written, or in, I believe, written in the 19-teens, probably, yeah. so... Or at least the 20s, <laughs> to the very... <laughs> it's been around for a long yeah. time. It's a very, I mean, every... It seems like every school you read it is one of the books during English class. Yeah, it's definitely like one that, of so. those, like, middle to junior... Junior high to high school required reading for most people. Unlike this guy who got out of it. Mm, still you. never read it. Yeah. Um, I'm happy in my ignorance. Educated, Woo, yeah. ignorance! <laughs> <laughs> going in a very different direction, though, we're going to talk about The Reluctant Fundamentalist. Mm -hmm. Which, uh... Which is a title I enjoy already. Yeah. Probably a lot of people did not see this, yeah. unfortunately. I actually was the one to review this Look at on you. the MacGuffin site, and I very much actually enjoyed it. It's um, stars Tell us a little about it. Riz Ahmed okay. uh, and uh, Kate Hudson. Oh. Sort of a couple. Riz Ahmed plays, I forget what country he's from in the Middle East, but he moves to America as part of his parents trying to, you know, give him more opportunities and stuff like okay. that. And he grows up in America, essentially, and he begins to appreciate the American value system and stuff like that. Falls, uh, actually, just skip a part. Uh, he 
lives in America working as a stockbroker, I believe, oh. when 9-11 happens. Oh, interesting. And as part of that, like, America's response to him... Fallout. It sort of pushes him out. Interesting. And he falls in love with the woman, Kate Hudson, whose, I believe, fiancé died during 9-11. Okay. I forget, so they have, like, a complex relationship. Huh. But essentially, it's sort of like this guy in 2011 who sort of become a Muslim leader reflecting back on how he got pushed to that as a guy who was very much accepting of America. It. And it's huh. not necessarily like he's, like, anti-America. Yeah. But, like, the whole... It just kind of gives him, like, he has a desire to reconnect with his roots. Because... Well, it's a, the system has sort of broken him and sort of his love towards the American value system. Huh. And so, like, he feels like America is, like, misdirected, perhaps. And it's, it's a really, I mean, it's a really well acted. I'll be film. renting that here. It's, it's really good. Uh, I mean, the sad thing about it is that it's got, like, no special features. It's got one little making up featurette in the theatrical trailer, and that's it. Yeah. So, for a film that was really interesting and thoughtful, and probably one of the more interesting films I've seen this year. And Rezamed, I and I, have, I don't know a heck of all his work. I think he's going to be in that film Closed Circuit. Okay. That's coming out this week. I think he has a role in that. But hmm. very, very talented actor. Interesting. And I look forward to seeing what he does going forward. But yeah, it's a very sort of interesting perspective on like how, you know, people get sort of Polarized. Uh, polarized and become <laughs> fundamentalists. You know, huh. it's sort of like, he, he, it's not that he wants to be this. This yeah. is sort of like what society has pushed him to into being because, you know, he was somebody who embraced America and stuff like wow. that. Wow, so that sounds fascinating. It's very, very interesting. I film. like stuff like that that yeah. takes that kind of other side. I forget the name of that movie about the suicide bombers, not Paradise Lost, something, something uh, like that. You know, yeah. the two guys that are... Mm -hmm. and, what I was mean, that called? Yeah, yeah. yeah but still. But uh, directed by Mira Nair. Okay. So she did, you know, Mississippi Masala, Monsoon Wedding, gotcha. very big in the indie film in the late 90s. And mm. then she went on to do, like, Vanity Fair okay. um, with um, Walk the Line. Uh, uh, Joaquin? No, yeah. the other one. Oh. Um, Reese Witherspoon. Yes, thank and you. And then um, Amelia as well. Okay. So, you know, she's she's mm. kind of gradually gotten bigger and bigger as well. And so it's interesting to sort of see her re-embrace those sort of indie yeah, she came definitely. from. So that's cool. Moving right along, we're going to drift back into sort of the much more mainstream with yes. Pain and Gain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gun show! This is the Michael Bay indie film? Yeah, I like, I like pointing this out because in nowadays this is considered indie, which is the fact that at just over $20 million. Right, wait, like, let's stop right there. First off, um, this is what Michael Bay claims. Yes. I've heard a lot of speculation that says it's closer to twice that, 50, well, 60 million yeah, dollars. Yeah, interestingly enough, it stands as his lowest budgeted film since his feature film debut of De Bad Boys. But according, supposedly he, Mark Wahlberg, and Dwayne Johnson took pay cuts to keep the budget down. I don't know. I've, I've heard it's... Maybe that's it's just my, an announced thing. Yeah, I, uh, I've heard it's yeah. like twice as much. I will say... Um, Number one, Ben Nason, who reviewed this for the site, gave it a C-, and I think that might even be generous. <laughs> um, and as a, I'm a Michael Bay apologist, as yes, you know. Yes, you are. <laughs> um, but, number one, it looks phenomenal. Like, yes. it looks just as good as any of his That's other true. films. It does like, look just the, like all the of his other films visually. production value is so yeah. polished and mm -hmm. beautiful. Number two, I will say I appreciate Michael Bay's sort of love of Miami and this story like this is a, a story he had wanted to do for yeah. years I like, think since 2000 he's been looking to yeah. do it but then he kept getting delayed with Transformer films Big and just projects, pushing yeah. it pushing it back and, and I mean this is a, a true based on a true story yep. of this like Miami um <laughs> Group of uh, what are personal trainers yeah. who decide to rob this like gangster gangster? You know things go wrong, no surprise, and you know mm -hmm. they have to deal with the fallout of that. You know there's a detective involved, a private investigator played by Ed Harris That's who's right, on their yep. trail as well, and yeah, it's just sort of a, a quirky story. Number one, like this is part of the whole like um, very bad things scenario for me, yes. where none of the characters are likable, so mm, I have a lot of trouble mm -hmm. getting invested in it. Number one, that way, and number two, there's so much narration in this film. That's right, it's you painful to yes. like watch. Like, <laughs> yes. eh, like it's not just one character. Like, literally, all the characters narrate like 25 <laughs> to 40 percent of the movie. It's just like so much narration. It's absurd. <laughs> so that's a bummer, but. The weirdest thing of all is you can get a combo pack of this with the Blu-ray, DVD, digital copy. Okay. But there are no special features at all. None. Zero. Not even a trailer. Nothing. <laughs> like, and maybe it's one of those Michael Bay things that they're going to re-release it later with a like, whole bunch he'll of... He'll release random. one that looks like a big beefy bicep something, or something. Or... But, like, 
Jeez, I mean, I I was flabbergasted. Maybe that not even is, a trailer was on this. Maybe it was because you know they he tried to make it super low budget and it didn't probably recoup it, and so maybe he just decided to move along. I don't know, like it got, uh, he's got to work on Transformers four, or five, or whatever the hell they're up four, to. Four, yeah. yeah. I I mean, I mean, I don't remember if it did well theatrically. I can't remember the final tally, but mm. I will say critically, it was like annihilated i recall like it was not well received <laughs> understandably, understandably yeah so. <laughs> whatever you know what, what what can you say yeah Final it's michael bay that's yeah. what i can say yeah that's what i can say yeah. uh, sadly i have to agree with that uh finally this week the last one we're going to talk about is the walking dead yes. season three mm-hmm. this is the last season to be released of yep. the I don't know, critically acclaimed and super popular I, I th- yeah, franchise. Yeah, I think it's like the one of the most, I think the recent season premiere broke records for most yeah. watched cable. I mean, it's, it's for cable, it is almost like borderline equivalent of like major network yeah. numbers. Yeah. Like yeah, it is so like Consistently, high. even during the second season, which was terrible, it was consistently yeah. hauling in gross amount of ratings. Yeah, and it's one of those shows that's had, I mean... Incredible tr- troubles, you know, like sh- showrunners, like so um, many. Yeah, Frank Darabont Frank Bar- left famously and, left. I forget and, whoever it, what the dude that was in um, the second season left as yeah, well. Like it's, third season, yeah. It's it's been very tumultuous in terms of its production, but yes. it seems to just continue to gain yeah, steam, I mean, which is good. I mean, you know, I would have thought zombies would be tapering off one of these days, much like vampires, but you know, but, I'm, but I'm clearly not with the mainstream I, I, on I that. I feel like this is maybe going the True Blood approach, though. Where while people are getting burnt out on trying to come up with new ideas, the tried and true formula that they still enjoy, they want to continue. I wouldn't compare it to along. True Blood because I, I think True Blood. No, I, <laughs> I'm a tough. Place I don't well. watch True Blood, and I don't care about vampires. Yeah, so. But I'm just you know another television it's a theory. cable. Yeah, that's a yeah. theory. I mean, I, I will say you know. Uh, this season was great, first yeah. off. I mean, you can either get the Blu-ray or DVD, sadly. This is not one of those shows that has, you know, a bunch of stuff together. Uh, definitely a rebound season. Yes. But also, there's a ton of stuff in terms of special features on those mm-hmm. shows. I mean, there's a ton of audio commentaries. There's uh, a feature out about the governor, including the character traits, the Kami with governor. the you know, exterior interiors. It highlights the character's evolution and David Morrissey's performance. Mm-hmm. He was um, so good. There's a Gone But Not For Gone feature out, which discusses the death of a character character death scene makeup and prosthetics and the emotional onset on-screen feeling surrounding the death which is cool interestingly enough about death and this char- death and characters no spoilers uh all the principal actors get a have a last supper meal the day that their character is gonna die so if there's ever that's gonna happen that's they cool. all sit down and have yeah. like a like a farewell last supper but anyway yeah. sorry continue and then there's a, a bunch of featurettes about like michoni Mm-hmm. Um, was it Michonne? Michonne. Michonne. Yeah. Um, which, like, there's a feature of examines Michonne, including, was it Dinah Such Guerra's bad. performance? Oh, yeah, the actress? I forget. Her, her. conflict with Merle, oh, deep character traits, and there's also Michonne versus the governor, a mm-hmm. closer look at the season's driving conflict with emphasis on one of the scenes. Yes. You know, it's, and I mean, these are just a and few. And is this a limited case, too? Like, Well, there is an additional, oh, okay. there, there's an optional uh, limited edition, much like we've seen in the past. <laughs> with the one with that had the screwdriver exactly. in the eye. So this is a McFarland. Carwin Toys Governor's Aquarium case okay. option, which is $95 limited edition. <laughs> which is probably the aquarium full of the zombie yes, heads. Yes, which it is. Exactly. Yes. That's exactly I assume it probably has one, but maybe they went crazy and it's like super big and it's like three. It, I feel like two yeah, would be a bad... There's a, yeah, there's a few, a, yeah. Okay. I mean, I think there's like a couple and then three will... I think it's interesting that in this season, the makeup team consistently across the board used darker makeup skin hmm. tones for all the walkers to show the idea that time has progressed and that's that more cool. and more decays. Yeah, I like that. Just subtle things like uh, that in the background cool. where you'll see over time them getting worse and worse and worse. And the fact that they're paying attention to that is yeah, that kind one of, of the problems of with like, any cinematic movie is it's like you you only usually get a slice of time in the zombies. I was going to say though, I think you know one of the exceptions of those warm bodies, which sort of had yes, that evolution of like you know yes. becoming like the skeletons mm-hmm, and stuff like yeah. that. I thought that was kind of an interesting yep. idea of like there is an evolution mm-hmm. to this. What do you they know, call those? The bone bonies, bonies or something, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, that was a great movie. That was a great movie. But, you know, uh, Walking Dead seems to be going very strong. This is a, a very strong release from them, which is yes. cool. I, I mean, personally, it's not my favorite show on a, uh, AMC, but it's definitely an enjoyable yes. show. It's so. definitely, while it's not, again, same thing, not my favorite show on AMC, because, man, they have a lot kill, of good they're shows. killing it, but yeah. it's definitely in my rotation of things that I have to watch the yeah. day they come I mean, out. you know, it's like <laughs> this and... 
I would say Game of Thrones that seem to be like the two like ratings behemoths. Well, the or... two shows that like you have to see. Maybe mm. I guess Breaking Bad now it's the like last last part of it. But like the shows that you absolutely must watch or you're going to get screwed on spoilers. Yes. yes. So, yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> when those two shows are on, I don't I the just The internet, don't go to yeah. You can't go on Facebook, Twitter. can't say <laughs> yeah, 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 so I guess that wraps up for this mm -hmm. week. Let us know which DVDs you'll be picking up. As always, you can check us out at MacGuffin. That's MacGuff.n. Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast. Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast. Yeah. Phone number, 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes. We're on Blip.tv. We're on Miro. We're on Roku. We're on Get Glue, where you can get some badges and stickers by checking in like it's a hotel. <laughs> Leave us some stars on iTunes, some thumbs on YouTube. Hit us with some comments there. We'll yeah. get you back in the... See you next time. T1000 can't stop me. I'm fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm fire tonight. It's tight. Don't even try to bite the sound of style. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels all right.